All right, Dave Random here. Um, very randomly going to paint my uh, 92 YJ uh, snow camel pattern. To be honest with you, I'll show you exactly why. See, there's this continuous thing about this brownie, orange colored stuff that likes to eat away at things. Um, I haven't gotten around to fixing this one yet. We did, however, fix this one looked exactly the same plus the structural support behind it was done uh, so I kind of went ahead and patched it up painted it flat black but I keep doing all these random colors I mean there's this black there's this semi gloss black on the door there's this flat black I don't know what black that used to be that's powder coated black but it's been sprayed over because I didn't care there's the original blue that I bought it in uh, if you dig deeper you can actually well i don't know if that's much of a telltale sign but it used to be white uh, there you go you can see a little chip there that was the original color was white it's a jeep islander edition or jeep wrangler islander edition so it used to have the sunshine on the hood and all that but i figure if i keep having to fix up all these holes and these random patches i still got stuff here that i got to do i uh right there yeah, I was kind of welding some crap up here. You could tell that I missed a couple pinholes. There used to be just a big rust thing here. So I got to attack stuff like this, this, this still. But I'm tired of all these multicolors. So snow camel. That way when I cut a piece out, I can just kind of patch it back in with a blotch. And then you'll never even know the difference. So I got the driveway workshop set up. Uh, I got my paint cans in there, sandpaper. Got the old uh, air chuchu out. We're going to start sanding on this thing uh, just ever so lightly I mean that's really the nicest paint that's left anywhere uh, it's kind of a shame to get rid of it but at the same time it's for the greater good so driveway Jeep driveway workshop let's see how this goes Alright, so I've got the black base coat done in flat black uh, besides some minor 
details of trying to use a different flat black from a different company and it turned out it was semi-gloss so I had a half and half thing going and I had to redo all that. It is splotchy at best, it's actually still kind of drying. I'm going to see if I have to touch up the hood or not because uh, I don't want to be seeing those streaks in my plot in my pattern. Otherwise uh, it's not teabag. This is the generalized plan. I feel like it's not going to work as well as I think. Um, I feel I'm going to have big trouble trying to control the overspray and also uh, getting sharp crisp lines uh, at this point I don't think I'm gonna care about the sharp crisp lines I just want the pattern to be down we're gonna see how this goes I mean I got nothing else to say other than I'm gonna try it this is a first time around uh, it will be a shame if it doesn't work out because my Jeep here doesn't look half bad all matte black at that point I could use another like, couple spray bombs and you know just give it a little bit more of a uniform look so we're gonna see how this goes. Uh, I mean, there's nothing to it but to try it. So, here we go. It's getting dark out. I'm gonna keep going for a little bit, but just to be able to grab what it's looking like so far, I wouldn't mind using the light. Don't get me wrong, it's looking pretty mint. A uh, couple little spots where it fades out, but I mean, I'm I'm trying to take my time with this. These uh, these cutout stencils are all right, but they don't like to conform to shapes. A little bit going on there. I just sprayed that one so it's still wet and I still got to take this one off right away but I mean it is looking pretty good uh, definitely time consuming I'm generally rushed for time and this is one of those things where it's just it's mind-boggling how long this takes uh, all the little bits and pieces and, and honestly the biggest thing is trying to mask around the area uh, all this extra paper and taping around it so I don't get all the overspray that's what's taken up the most of my time So there it is, day 8 billion, I don't know, feels like it. In all honesty, I started last Sunday and today is Sunday. So it's been exactly a week. I've only been working on it in the evenings. Uh, I'm not 100% satisfied with the pattern, but I'll call it 98% satisfaction guaranteed. I've started the wet sanding, that's why he's all wet. 
I'm trying to get rid of the oversprays. I did test my theory, so as you can see here, it doesn't look too bad. You can still see some pieces, but I mean, I'm not going to get rid of it all. Yes, my nails are very goth today. I'm not going to be able to get rid of it all, but I mean, this is already looking tons better than it did. I saved on this side for you to kind of be able to see. You know, you could see a lot of that, that white coming out. You can see where my tape mark was from where I stuck a piece of tape down, whatever. So that kind of comes out. It doesn't come out into a crisp line, but it does tend to blend a little better. I might be able to get rid of some of this. It's really hard on the creases and you got to be very careful because you, you don't want to be wearing through to the underside of paint. Uh, I did learn a lot from my mistakes. You know, the wet sanding starting to help. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but you can see layers, layers of other blotches and patches but it's really not too bad it's exactly what i was going for this is no way near a professional job i still have a plan for this black space right here i do regret that i didn't cut my stencil yesterday like i was supposed to because now i got to spray it quickly and basically do it the max power way or the dave random way in this case which is the wrong way but faster i'm just using a fine synthetic wool the finest I could get. I'm assuming you could just use a fine scotch bright pad too, but I happen to have this line around. for the clear coat. Got my Corona Catcher 9000 here. And uh, there's not much else to say. I got my clear coat. We're gonna have at it. Today's painting has been brought to you by The Twink Bowl Combo No longer just for line painters It is the breakfast of champion for all painters If you would like your ordinary paint job to look extraordinary The Twink Bowl Combo Mmm, delicious Alright, I got the tape off I gotta put the light bar back on Headlights, back in Markers, not a whole lot Oh, I gotta put my uh stinger hoop front bumper back on otherwise I wanted to show you a product listing of what I used started off with the armor coat rust paint uh, flat black it's all flat um, it, it was an okay paint I had a good nice finish to it it was very forgiving but it sprays like crap I only bought this stuff because it was the cheapest on the shelf when I was trying to save money I mean really that's the only reason I bought this Otherwise, I switch, quickly switched back over to the trim clad rust paint, flat black, along with the flat gray. Uh, this is the Ukrainian tire, or 
Canadian Tire, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, it's their kind of house brand of spray cans. They're also very cheap and actually not too bad. I almost would have used the flat black had I not already bought this. The only reason I got this one was because they were out of flat white in the trim clad. And this is what I finished it off with as the clear coat. Custom matte finish. Acrylic enamel clear coat duplicolor. I was having a hard time figuring out what kind of clear coat to use. Uh, by the way, trim clad, if you're watching, you need to make a flat or matte uh, clear coat. The best you had was satin for me. Uh, it would have been real nice at eight bucks a can. Uh, this stuff was unfortunately like 15 bucks a can. Uh, it took me four. I uh, probably could have used even more coverage and I'm doing it out in the freaking wind. So we got what we got out of it. I, I'm not spending any more. There's the uh, product listing. For, uh, what it took me to get that along with a shit ton of time and a bit of money money wasn't too bad I, it, spray cans right I mean this was this was the most expensive part that was 60 bucks for the clear I don't know whether it was worth it or not but we're gonna find out afterwards uh, all together I want to say I'm probably around the well, about 160 bucks into it with all the cans I ended up having to buy I'm pretty happy with it well, this is just terrible quality footage because I waited till it was too late and you can just see his ass there. Yeah. That would be the majestic Manitoba bison stuck behind a cage at the Assiniboine Park Zoo. So, the majestic bison is over there. You're going to have to take my word for it. Figured I'm going to do my reveal with a fellow Canadian, fellow Manitoban in fact, the Manitoba bison. Got my green underglow going. That's actually just a courtesy light, puddle light. It comes up with the doors. Ta-da! They're actually just cheap little trailer lights, green ones that I got off of eBay for five bucks. I think it was for the pair. But, uh, I mean, that's the paint job. You've already seen it. I've clear coated it now. I got my bumper back on. Got my headlights back in. Light bar, which unfortunately says is illegal to ride in Manitoba and many other places with it uncovered. So I made this nifty little cover here it's just some of that like corrugated plastic stuff that I cut a strip out of and velcroed it over it's uh, made by Rubicon Express as the sticker says but, I mean that's it I'm very happy with the way that turned out and turning a lot of heads the piece de resistance oh Canada oh well that's gonna wrap it up though things that I learned when you're doing the pattern, start with bigger color blotches. Uh, these are even too small. You need to start with like bigger solid patterns of gray and white and then cover over them with the smaller pieces. You'll go through a hell of a lot less touch-ups and work. Um, what else did I learn? Learn that that fine uh, steel wool substitute stuff, basically it's like a scotch bright pad, the fine stuff. Uh, when you use that with water as a wet sand, it actually takes care of, you know, lots of the overspray, makes the edges a little bit crisper again, but then you do have to kind of clear coat over it. Otherwise, I mean, for a cheap job, it ain't tea bag. She meant. Uh, I will say this, if you want to do anything even similar or remotely close to a camo pattern on a vehicle, make sure you dedicate your time. Time was the biggest thing to achieve this. Um, I, like I said, one week it took me to do. Yeah, fine, it was evenings here and there. Yesterday was the first full day I got to do at it. And today I got to sand and clear coat, and even that was rushed. So I'm Dave Random. I'm gonna wrap this one up. Uh, it's getting dark, I don't even know if you can see me. Thumbs up. Lou's got his camo job. Uh, took a long time, took a lot of effort. Totally worth it. Probably not gonna be the last color he's ever gonna be in. Unfortunately, say this was supposed to be a temporary job. Uh, it ended up turning into something a hell of a lot more extensive than I ever expected it to be. I'm happy with it. Uh, eventually speaking, I wanted to do bedliner. Uh, I don't feel that I'm going to go through this kind of effort with bedliner. Uh, I may still. Uh, I do like the way it turned out. But there's a good chance uh, he might just get painted years down the road once I actually do everything that I wanted to do. It might be the olive drab green one color with the black trim. Uh, this this was tough and with bedliner I could honestly see there being many many problems unless you come at it a different way So but this is how you could do it with spray cans I mean, I wanted to show everybody that even in your driveway with the wind and the bugs and the leaf You can still get a decent job. Don't go for a glossy paint job. That's just gonna cause problems The flat is very forgiving other than that Dave random signing off